It's time to reveal an all new Porsche underneath here. I got for you, wait for it, the all new electric Porsche Macan. And this here is the base model so far, the Macan 4. Underneath the second one to be revealed soon is the Macan Turbo. Both electric and we're going to find out first of all about this new EV version but also what about the future of the combustion models of the Macan. Everything with Thomas Nautogefühl in 4K full screen full length. Let's go here with the front of the new electric version. You see definitely a very wide stance of course a more closed look but in lower part there is still an air intake and it is an adaptive one to improve the aerodynamics so it's closed when the cooling is not needed actually. There's also a complete closed underfloor. Aerodynamic figures, the CD value is overall 0.25. In comparison, a Model X from Tesla is 0.24. A Model Y would be 0.23, so not as good as Tesla, but overall in this segment here, already a very good aerodynamic figure. Here the headlamp, you can see it's split there in the visual part and matrix LED is an option. This color here, by the way, is called Provence. <laughs> it's called Provence. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. It's an all new color, so I have to learn and remember it, right? But it's also, you could also call it a lavender or something. So a very interesting, unique color we haven't seen so far. You can see at the side profile, also to totally new wheels, of course. Although we know the basic styling of this one, the maximum size available is 22 inch. And this one here is indeed the biggest one, 22 inch. And I have never seen this car here before. This reveal I did for you was the live reveal also for me. And I've done that, that, you know, I'm actually as surprised as you. I know the facts of the vehicle, but I also want to share this live impression I have myself. You can see here the wheel arches are a little bit integrated, a little bit hidden um, underneath here. So this is also a new design clue. And I have to say, it definitely does look Macan alike. Key fob, typical silhouette, but then again, some new materials. This is then the hotkey for the trunk, and there's also a hotkey for the possible frunk. Let's see how it works. You know, usually you have to unlock a frunk first, um, and then there's always a discussion do you need one or not? Sometimes people say, yeah, we'll have everything stored in the rear, and then I want access to the charging cable in front. Look at that now. That's a perfect solution, isn't it? I don't have to, you know, extra unlock it right here. That's super simple. And then we have 80 liters here in the front. And that is really a great solution that you can put your charging cable there in the front, whereas you can pack everything in the rear and you don't and you have to, you know, search for the charging cable underneath a box or something. So that's awesome. Use the frunk, I must. The length now at 4 meters 78 or 188 inches. That's 10 centimeters or 4 inches longer than the combustion engine Macan. And most of that gain in length goes into a longer wheelbase and shorter overhangs. After all, you don't need the engine there in the front. What do you think design-wise? Is it a problem when the hood is now a little bit shorter? But I feel that, especially here to the rear part, you can definitely see it's still a Macan. So there's a very characteristic hip area and also this coupé-alike line here. I can already tell you so far, by the way, here we have frameless doors on all four doors. And of course, an extensive interior part is to come up very soon. Suspension-wise, it's very interesting. You would start with um, base suspension, just steel suspension. On top of that, PASM, then you have the adaptive one. And on top of that, you can get the adaptive air suspension, which would be standard for the turbo coming up here next to us, the second vehicle very soon. However, on the Northern American market, the air suspension will always be standard. Well, I can tell you who's liking that vehicle and who's liking that color. Well. Leah definitely likes it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not so sure about the color yet, but um, yeah, maybe Leah is more the target group of that color indeed. So she loves it. Interior, what do you think? She likes it. Yeah. <laughs> 
towards the rear, you can once again see these shorter overhangs also in the rear. Then the light strip goes all the way across. The sister model of this one here, by the way, sharing this new PPE platform, it's called Premium Platform Electric, shared with the Audi Q6 e-tron. We've already driven that on a prototype ride. This one here, the new Macan Electric, is a little bit longer than the Q6 e-tron, but they are, of course, in the very, very same segment. Also, a very clean look in the rear, and then the sporty accentuation in the lower part. On the technology side, by the way, you could optionally get, and this only for the Macan, not for the Audi, here, a rear axle steering, and the rear wheels turn up to five degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels, reducing the turning circle and also making it more agile at lower speeds. Turning indicators in the front, wow, that looks really fancy, doesn't it? So all the daytime running light is on top of here. And then the main light system, this one is also the LED matrix, is then here in the lower part. Have you seen, by the way, the structure here on top of the lower spoiler? This is also pretty cool. Turning indicators in the rear, you can see here a very slim integration, but very wide and horizontal. It's actually quite cool. And another detail I just discovered here, look at that, how the rear view camera is integrated right here. And then you have this very nice integration design where I see a big Porsche lettering. And also the opener for the trunk is right here. Of course, we're soon going to check out the trunk for you. So there is no rear wiper, however. And that is always giving a lot of discussions. So design-wise, of course, it looks way better without a rear wiper. You remember in the combustion engine version, there you could press this button, integrate it in the rear wiper to open it. was also quite fancy. Yeah, but then again, some complain that you don't, you know, you, you cannot see that well through the rear window when you don't have the rear wiper. And I can actually confirm that usually cars I drive who don't have a rear wiper, the visibility is always somewhat limited when it's, for, so for example, very rainy. So far, all Macan will come with all-wheel drive, means one electric motor in the front, one electric motor in the rear. The rear one will always be the stronger one. And so this platform is also allowing a rear-wheel drive only version, which might be coming as a new entry version then later on. This one here, the Macan 4, around 400 horsepower and 5.1 seconds in the acceleration figure. Top speed, 220 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour. There is one that is quicker and faster. Because at 640 horsepower and then 3.3 seconds in the acceleration figure is the new electric Macan Turbo. That is, of course, supercar figures. Here also with the all-wheel drive, this one here is ice gray, this color. That looks always pretty cool, right? Wow, what a visual appearance. However, I have to say, if you compare the combustion engine models, definitely you always see these shorter overhangs. And I think it looks pretty cool. In the front, I think it looks even more like tech style, alike, you know, like technology style, more angular, maybe even like, even more German in design, but the short overhangs, I think, there the combustion engine looks a little bit cooler because longer overhang always appeals a little bit more to the eye. Or what's your take on that? Would we'll be looking forward to your comments. Here in the front, we can see the Macan Turbo is then here painted in high gloss black to be a you know, little bit more upmarket, even if you compare it to the base version. And here, once again, we have the split between the headlamps units. And the color, of course, that is totally free. You can pick uh, this color also for the base version. And our turbo vehicle here has also a blacked out Porsche logo. And also this vertical blade right here. However, I think it becomes clear that if we compare it to the combustion models, very much in general now, we've seen this trend here. When you look at the electric versions of these vehicles, the design differences between the base versions and the super top sporty versions are not as large as they used to be with the combustion engine models. Macan Turbo from the side, here yeah, once again 22 inch wheels, these ones are also aerodynamically optimized. Then the wheel arches are painted in high gloss black and we also have these carbon fiber inserts right here. This insert here by the way has always been a style thing for the 
Porsche Macan and once again the hip area right here. A little bit more different in the rear because the turbo has the turbo badge right here and also these additional styling elements and also high gloss black in the lower part. Active aerodynamics by the way also play a part at the rear. Maybe you remember the combustion engine version which has the roof spoiler that is gone so it's a more fluent design but then here we have the active rear wing that can go up. Top speed for the Macan turbo model, 260 kilometers an hour, 160 miles an hour. That's even faster than we go on the German Autobahn. Yeah, and probably even on the German Autobahn at some point we'll get the speed limit in Germany. There are still discussions in, at the moment. And here in our cutaway model, we can talk about the battery and charging. You can see here the battery pack in the lower part of the vehicle. That's why also the center of gravity is always pretty low and we can also expect good driving dynamics. Although, of course, this vehicle will be much heavier than the petrol engine version. This battery pack here is at 95 kilowatt hours net. So actually pretty large already. And what we can realistically expect from the driving range will be about 500 kilometers or 300 miles for the realistic or real world range. Recharging technology, pretty good, 800 volt. We know that already from the Taycan. And this will give you 21 minutes, 10 to 80% state of charge. Recharging here is actually possible on both sides. This side will house AC and DC, AC 11 kilowatt, for now, 22 kilowatt AC will come later. Then DC peak is 270 kilowatt when you charge 800 volt. Interesting technology, when you charge 400 volt, the battery pack will basically split in half and then have a 150 kilowatt peak. On the other side, there will be an additional AC charger, so then you're a little bit more flexible. Just for the Chinese market, you would have DC on the one side and AC on the other side. And on right-hand drive markets, it will be the same here. AC, DC there, and yeah, yo, AC, DC. And uh, here then the AC only. So they will not change that here, for example, for the UK market. Yeah, cost issues and so on. Charging flap is base manual. And then you can also optionally get here this capacitive sensor and then it goes open like this electronically. Then when you put in the DC plug like this, and then you when you pull it out, this one will go up a little bit and then, you know, hopefully flap back automatically. And this one closes after two minutes when it's like this or also when you close the vehicle. Now to the interior, start with the Macan Turbo because this one here has a bright interior. It's just better to see and to film. First of all, door closing sound. Mm, that's very solid, although it is frameless, and that is very rare. Here, by the way, you can see these are dual insulated windows, both front and also here in the rear. So promising us also good noise insulation while driving. Of course, we'll keep you updated with that as soon as possible. Then inside of the doors in this wrapped tightly design, as we know from Porsche, here also hardly any hard pack black plastic. Also this lower part is also somewhat coated. On the inside part here, however, um, there's no felt or something that's hard pack and so things could also slide around in here. Then the window levers, they have nice clicking sounds. So that's actually cool. Then Macan Turbo Entry Badge here in the lower part. And you can, of course, get different colors for the interior. Here also blacked out the logo on the steering wheel, sporty, slim steering wheel. This is basically known from the Macan as well. Sport seats here with more shoulder accentuation. And the base seat would come with the fabric on the inside and the leatherette on the outside and also with a race text, so a microfiber steering wheel. So for, you know, for all people that care about animals, there is an animal-free version available. It will also be the base version. This one here, however, the optional animal skin equipment. Then, with me, 189, six for two, a lot of headroom left. I heard there will also be a version with a panoramic roof that you can also open. Of course, later on, we'll give you more insight for more versions to come. So always stay subscribed here on our channel. But overall, this is very interesting. So 
I mean, from the outside you've seen, it does have changed the look. Maybe a little bit less SUV, maybe even a little bit crossover. And here the seating position is actually three centimeters or an inch lower if you compare it to the predecessor. So also from the seating position, it feels more crossover than SUV now. Alternative interior, here you can also get the wooden inlet. And this one would be our Macan 4 interior, but the color choice is of course free. This one then would be the one in all black. And we can also see the ambient lighting integration. And this is also supposed to be an interactive light bar that can also communicate with you. Interior cockpit overview, 12.6 inch digital instruments, 10.9 inch, 10.9 inch. This passenger screen is an option. Really nice here, the steering wheel with manual volume control on left side. Right side then you can control the digital instruments and here the drive mode selector so easy solution to pick the driving modes and there you can see also that the ambient lighting this interaction bar reacts on switching the driving modes in the instruments here we can also see a realistic range prediction and then you can also switch the contents what you want to see then here in these individual tiles you can get this head-up display it is really large for your own eye actually and it can also feature some active features like augmented reality. Switch gear is directly next to the steering wheel here, by the way. And of course, we still have the analog clock in the interior here. Middle console here on the top part, you have nice clicking sound still with manual climate knobs. I really love that. That's one of my favorite features. However, here in this top part, then what the hell? It's a Porsche iPhone that gets a call. Now it's gone. Interesting, things happen. Then <laughs> you can see this a black knurling, so I would wish the metal knurling there. And that's also weird here, look at that. When I hold this one, you can move this top part up, but I would feel it needs to be a fixed one, as we know from Porsche, and also with metal knurling to slide this one open. And this is then the inductive charging pad with the mysterious phone that just received a phone call. Hmm. There's also a cooling behind there, by the way. I can also Put some light in there you can better see it there are some cooling holes i can see right there and then what i also found cool you have a manual volume jog then here for the music volume and then you have this flying middle console here with this whole adaptive cup holders on the inside and more space in the front next to this armrest it's well attached and some more space underneath the infotainment system is now android based from the programming language and that's why it's also quicker than before this gps however is an internal porsche gps and there you also have this route planning and when you set actually a charging station as destination then there's also the preheating from the battery heat pump by the way is standard other than that in this infotainment system for example you have here the drive mode select as you can see also the air suspension goes up and down depending on the drive mode apple carplay or android auto is available as the phone connection apple carplay integration looks like this and when you have apple maps active then you can also see something of that here in the digital instruments and even something in the head-up display so leah just told me when i have my hand here that there's like a hulk monster hand mirroring on the window. I can't see it, but she said it's supposed to be funny, so I should do it. <laughs> and then inside of the doors here in the rear, there is some kind of covering also, so not this you know hard plastic look, but it, the, it's kind of hard on top here, but you have a nice surface. Once again, no inserts here on the middle part. Legroom has increased here with the new model, if you compare it to the combustion engine version, because it has a longer wheelbase. You can see here, I still have some room left in front of my knees, even if a tall driver is driving. It's not much legroom here, but it's more or less okay. But it's also a quite long vehicle. Then headroom here in the rear is also fine. And I also like this nice microfiber covering here. We have all the way across the ceiling. Well, then the thing is on the middle seat, you can see sit here, but it's getting quite close. So I think considering they're just short overhangs, the package could be better for seating. And there's also yeah, not so much space here as for the middle tunnel. It is an EV platform, but um, they also have this small step here. And this middle console here has an own climate unit with 
nice clicking sounds and also this cool metal knurling still. Now for the trunk we have two possibilities, either here on the key fob or here, this button then next to the camera. Press it, and there we go. And the leader figure here is either 540 liters without the Bose sound system or 480 liters when you have the Bose sound system. I'll just show you that underneath very soon. First of all, measurements, a good meter of 40 inches in width. And then here is about 90 centimeters or 35 inches in length. You can see here a cabin trolley also fits in a vertical way. Then we can fold the seats right here. There we go. It's not only a two-third, one-third split, but you can also just lower the ski hatch in the middle. And then to the front seats, this is here about 170 meters or 67 inches. And underneath here, you can see the difference if you have the optional sound equipment. Underneath here, by the way, I can feel that there is space still for a towing hook. And this one will be able to tow about two tons maximum. Macan Turbo trunk here, by the way, is in this case the same. This one here always gets the Bose sound equipment here with the subwoofer underneath. But in the other one, we have it optional. So in this case, it's both the same. Just you have to know that here you always lose the space underneath. But that's no problem, I feel, because you can very well use the trunk. Also nice is here, when I click this button here to close it, either to just, you know, close it without locking or closing and locking, just listen to this a very nice clicking sound then. And then I also do the child safety test. So first, listen to the clicking sound. Yeah, that's also sensitive enough. One more time clicking. One more time. Click. <laughs> and let's also listen to that, how that closes. Yeah, that's also nice because sometimes they slam in a way that doesn't sound premium. And here they also paid attention to that. What about pricing and what happens to the petrol version of the Macan? First of all, as for the pricing for a Macan 4, the new electric base version. So far, German price 84,000 euros. That's about 15,000 euros or dollars more than the so far petrol engine version. 115,000 euros would be the Macan Turbo pricing. But of course, with extra equipment, the prices will be lifted even further. So not cheap at all, but I mean, it's also a Porsche after all. The combustion engine model, it really depends on the markets. In Europe, there is a problem with cyber security. They would need to invest a lot more money to make this very old platform of the combustion engine model ready for cyber security that it can't be attacked from the outside. So the combustion engine model on the European market will run out in 2024 already. If you want still a petrol Macan, then more or less you would need to order pretty, pretty soon. On the other markets, for example, North America or maybe also China, which are also the main markets for the Macan quantity-wise, there you can expect some like two more years the Macan will run from the moment we have recorded this video here. So maybe then ending in 2026. So the Macan Electric and the combustion engine model will run parallel for some time depending on the market for how long and then ultimately here the EV version will completely replace it. What's the whole take on that? Tell me in the comments. Also what do you think about design especially in comparison to the combustion engine model and the sibling would be the Audi Q6 e-tron or if you want still a petrol Macan we also have that for you.